In this video, I wanted to take a minute to talk about what an imaginary number is. Like, where does it come from? You'll hear that term, especially when you get into Algebra 2. More specifically, when you get into the idea of a quadratic. So you're dealing with sort of the y is equal to um, ax squared plus bx plus c. Because of the fact that in the quadratic formula, the negative b plus or minus that whole thing, you know, b squared minus 4ac over 2a, that whole nugget. But you'll see complex numbers start to match up. And I say complex numbers here. Uh, sometimes you'll see the word complex sort of used almost interchangeably with the word imaginary. Now, when we talk about imaginary numbers, mathematically speaking, we're not talking about just some number you made up. 30 gagillion or something is not really what we mean here. What we're talking about is the idea of um, what happens if you have sort of almost negative distance in a way, and I'll get more in depth than that in just a second, but it's the idea that, uh, you know, you'll start to see things popped up uh, where you see like 4i. Well, that actually has a mathematical uh, definition, and really i in and of itself is the same thing as saying the square root of negative 1. So uh, there is some sort of mathematical value to all of it, and that's kind of where it goes. So let's talk about where it comes from, and oh, by the way, why is it called complex? Well, complex just means that you have not only an i term, and I'm going to put b here to stand for any number in front of i, plus a, which would be a real number. And just like in real life, uh, if you have an imaginary part of your life and a real part of your life, and you start to look at them together as a group, it's possible that it's a very complex situation. Now, if you marry your imaginary friend, that might be a complex. So just FYI. It's when real meets un uh, imaginary. So uh, where does it all start? What, what does it begin? Well, the idea, for the most part, in terms of uh, where the idea of an imaginary would come in is the idea of a number line. So you've got your... 0, of course, and 1, 2, and 3. And then on your imaginary, or on the other side, you have your negatives. So they counterbalance something. So if we want to look at it from a directional standpoint, for each, this is supposed to be a 1, by the way, uh, for each direction, each step that you go east, it's positive, and each step that you go west, it's uh, negative. So just the idea that there is some sort of balance there uh, to address the situation. But when you start looking into the idea of a square, things become a little bit more complicated. So I have a square here, and let's just say that there are sides of 3. So as you can see, I have a side value of 3 right here, 1, 2, 3. And on the other side of it, if I can get my pen to do what it's supposed to do, we'll have another one. Otherwise, it's not a square. It'd be a different shape. And you're going to have to lie to yourself just now because uh, I realize that I put that first one not very close. Maybe I can fix it just a little bit so it doesn't look quite as bad. There you go. So lie to yourself and pretend those are uh, one by one squares. There you go. So now that we have a three by three. So what we're looking at is I could say that a square with sides three, so a three, and I'm making a square out of it, has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine independent blocks. But if I wanted to go backwards, like what happens if I have nine blocks and I want to figure out, well, what's the, ba what's the, where does it begin? What can I, what kind of square can I make with nine blocks? Well, I'll look at what I can fill the bottom with. So this is my the bottom of my square, or if I was talking about a plant, I would say it's the root of my square. What comes up out of that, out of the ground? What is the root uh, size of the bottom of that square? Well, I'll say that the square root, if I have nine blocks, is equal to three. Now, what does that have to do with anything? Well, I just solved this problem right here. Up here, we could say, okay, we've got 
three positive and you know there we go and there's three negative over here with a square you can't really do that you can't say well there's negative distance that doesn't really exist but there are times when it's nice to have dimensional figures two dimensional three dimensional figures that exist to balance out something else uh, you know when you deal with electricity sometimes that's an important thing to deal with so in order to deal with that we had to make uh, we like I was involved uh, mathematicians created the idea of okay well let's adjust for a negative nine so instead of having just nine we have nine you know all the way over here making a square so I want to adjust it by saying okay well the nine thing we can just pull out so we'll turn it into the square root of nine times the square root of negative 1, because negative 1 times 9 is negative 9, that whole thing. So I'll take the square root of 9, and it's 3, just like I said over here, but on the other side of it, I'll say that the square root of negative 1, instead of just leaving it looking really weird over here, I'll say, okay, that's imaginary. That's where imaginary numbers come from, just the idea that you can't have negative distance, but we need to somehow balance out the idea of two-dimensional, three-dimensional figures and where it all goes. So from here, I'll just do a couple quick uh, of problems to sort of s hopefully solidify the idea. So the square root of 144 is of course 12. The square root of 121 is 11, so what I'm going to do is look at this as the square root of 11 times the square root of negative 1. And I'll treat our square root of 121, the doi, I was just taking a step ahead there. Go down here and it becomes 11, square root of negative 1 becomes I, so I say it's 11i. Now to do the square root of 80, I may need to do a little bit of sort of simplest radical form first. So I'll take 80 and see if I can break it up into any of the squares. So I'll use division here. So 80, I'll say, okay, well, 4 can go into 80 20 times. I'm just doing the squares, by the way. 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9. Uh, so 9, and then it gives you something like 8.8 .8 repeating, which means it's not going to be useful for this. And then I'll do 4 times 4, which is 16, which comes out to be 5. Well, both of these work, but I'll have to further down 20. And if you don't know simplest radical form, I think I have video, and I'm sure other people do as well. But anyway, so I'll break 80 into the square root of 16 times the square root of 5. Now the square root of 16, of course, is 4 and the square root of 5 just stays like this. So I could say that the square root of 80 is really 4 square root of 5. Similar idea on the other side with uh, 72. So if I were to do 72, and of course it's negative, so I'll have to deal with that in just a minute. I'll do 4 and 18, but the problem is I know I'm going to have to redo it anyway. And I know that 9 goes into it relatively cleanly, so I'll try 9. 9 and 8 goes, but 8 has a 4 that goes into it, so it's not done yet. Uh, 16 and 4.5, so that's no good. 25 is not going to work. I'm just going to go ahead and skip on that one. Um, 36, and that one works perfect. 36. And two. You'll notice I'll just do in the squares here. I could put 25 in there for you. It's like 2.9, uh, something like that, ish. But only these work. This one works the most because it's the most broken down. So I would say that the square root of negative 72 is the square root of 36 times the square root of 2. And then since I have the negative here, I'm going to put times the square root of negative 1. Square root of 36 is, of course, 6 square root of 2 will just stay as 2 and then I'll pot the i right here. Now the reason that I wanna wanna put the i in front of the square root of 2, so why it's 6i square root of 2 as opposed to 6 square root of 2i, just because it makes it easier to so people don't think I'm trying to put the i under the radical. I don't want the i back here because it'll look like I'm saying 6 times the square root of 2i, but having the square root of i doesn't really make any sense. There's no purpose in it, uh, for the most part. But anyway, that's it. That's imaginary numbers. It's really not as complicated as it seems, but I always get questions about, well, what the heck is the point of it? And that's kind of the point of it, or what it means anyway. Uh, so hopefully this is helpful.